Hey, how you doing? It's Mr. Clifford. This is ACDC Econ. We're talking about monetary policy. All right, the key graph that you absolutely have to know is right here. It's the money market. It's going to be the supply and demand for money. Okay, let's start off by analyzing the demand. There's only two reasons why people actually demand money. The first one is for transactions. You want to go buy stuff, right? You want to go to the mall, you want to go to restaurants, you need a certain amount of money in your pocket or in your checking account to turn around and buy things. The second reason why you actually need money is because you prefer having money, liquid assets, as opposed to having some different asset, for example, bonds or real estate. Wait, we got to define liquidity. Liquidity is the ease in which you can convert an asset into cash. So your checking account is super liquid. All you got to do is walk in the bank and switch out your money. Right? Real estate, on the other hand, is not very liquid. It's an asset, but it takes time to sell it, and so it's not a very liquid asset. All right, let's analyze the graph. Over here is the interest rate. That's the price of using money. All right, watch this. If the interest rate is super high, I'm telling you that the quantity demanded of money is going to be low, and here's why. When the interest rate is high, do you prefer to have money in your pocket? I prefer having money in bonds earning you money. Well, the answer is in bonds, right? At 20% interest rate, I'd rather have no cash on me in my checking account, and I'd rather go buy some bonds, right? At a low interest rate, let's say 1%, the quantity man, it doesn't matter. I'll have money in my pocket, right? I'm not going to go buy bonds with it. So I'd rather have all my money in liquid assets as opposed to having my money in bonds at a super low interest rate because I'm not getting a very high return. This is the demand for money. Now, what about the supply? Who supplies? The Fed. The Fed. Right, the government's the one that supplies money, right? The Fed. Right? So what does it look like? Well, it's a vertical straight line, perfectly inelastic line right here. The reason why it's vertical is because the quantity of money out there, let's say $200 billion, right, is completely unrelated to the interest rate. It's set, it's right there, that's how much we have, that's it. This comes together and it gives you the interest rate, right? the equilibrium interest rate. Now this curve can shift. right? If people's spending habits change or if there's inflation or something, this demand curve can go up or it can go down. It can shift just like normal demand. Right, based on the transaction demand and the asset demand. Let's not focus on demand, let's focus on the supply. The key to understanding monetary policy is understanding interest rates. If you get that, you understand this entire unit. If the Fed increases the money supply, it'll drive down interest rates, and if the Fed decreases the money supply, it'll drive up interest rates. All right? So all monetary policy is, is increasing and decreasing the money supply in an effort to increase or decrease interest rates. Now, you should be asking yourself, well, how do they actually do this? Well, the answer is right here. It's the three Fed tools. These are the three things the Fed can do to adjust the money supply. That right there is the most important thing in monetary policy. The first one is the reserve requirement. The reserve requirement is how much banks have to hold in reserve at their bank. For example, if you go put $1,000 in the bank, the bank does not keep all $1,000 in the vault somewhere. What it does is it keeps some of it and it loans it out. How much does it keep? The reserve requirement. It's how much the government says the bank has to hold in reserves at the bank. All right, now if the Fed wanted to increase the money supply, what would it do to the reserve requirement? All right, it would decrease the reserve requirement. If the government decreased the reserve requirement, put it, let's say, 2%, that means there'd be more money that would be actually loaned out there. To decrease the money supply, they could increase the reserve requirement. Let's say they had banks hold 90%, that would decrease the amount of money that's actually out there. You're going to learn a whole lot more about that concept later on in this unit. Okay, now it's time to talk about the discount rate. The discount rate is the interest rate that the Fed charges banks to borrow money. So let's say there's a bank and they haven't covered their reserve requirement. They need a loan to cover the night to make sure they have that 10%. Well, what happens? They can go to the Fed and they can say, I need to borrow some money. That rate they charge them is the discount rate. Let's say the Fed wanted to increase the money supply. What well, will they do to the discount rate? Well, they would lower it. They'd make money easier to borrow from the Fed, which would increase the money supply. To decrease the money supply, they would increase the discount rate and make it harder for banks to borrow from the Fed. Okay, now it's time for the most important one, open market operations. The reason why this one's the most important is because this is the one the Fed does the most. Open market operations is buying and selling of government treasuries. All right, there's a bunch of treasuries out there. There's a bunch of bonds that the government has issued, right? And the Fed can either issue more or they can buy them back. So if the Fed wanted to increase money supply, should they buy or should they sell bonds? Well, the answer is they should buy. If the Fed buys bonds, right, they're giving people money and they're taking the bonds out of the system, right? And when they give the commercial banks money, that now means there's more money out there, more money increases the money supply. Now, that means if they want to decrease the money supply, they're going to sell. They sell bonds. When the Fed sells bonds, they give out bonds and they take money out of the system, right? There's a bond, that's not money, we'll take money out of the system, decreasing the money supply. To help you remember whether buy increases or decreases the money supply, I got a trick, right? Buy big, right? 
if the Fed buys bonds, it makes the money supply bigger. If they sell them, sell small. All right? It'll make the money supply smaller. Okay, now it's time to see how this thing's connected to aggregate demand. Till next time.